Today is the last day for the public to comment on the candidates shortlisted to lead the judiciary. Four judges are in line to become the next Chief Justice. They are Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, President of the Supreme Court of Appeals, Mandisa Maya, Constitutional Court Justice Mbuise Limadlanga, and Gauteng Judge President Dunstan Mlambo. The Judicial Services Commission will interview them in February. For more on this, researcher and advocacy officer at Judges Matter, Mbegazeli Benjamin, joins me for this conversation. Mbegazeli, I don't know about you, but I am entirely frustrated. Uh, it's one thing for the president to be consultative uh, and want to bring in as many voices as possible into this process. But I just think that for, you know, the term of the previous Chief Justice ended in October, and we are not going to, be, to have a substantively appointed uh, Chief Justice until after February at least. And this is because there have been, at least now, this is the second round of public uh, consultations. I don't know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, what's your thinking about today's deadline? Uh, good morning, Tulas, and good morning to the viewers of ENCA. Um, we share the same frustrations that you have over how the process has dragged along. But we must say that we do support a more open and consultative and competitive process um, that was followed by the president because um, through this process, we are able now to say there are four excellent judges who have put themselves forward to be chief justice. So there's the, that's the advantage of all of this process. But we do think that it could have been managed better. Um, the, the president could have gotten the process going a long time before Chief Justice Mohueng retired. And, and also um, the fact that the JSC is also now calling for comments um, is also a bit, uh, it, it, it's duplicating the work that was previously done by the selection panel. So we think the process could have been better managed, but we are, we are really happy uh, for, for this open and, and competitive process. And, and part of my frustration, Megazil, and you are, you are welcome to take it in any direction, is that I look at the Constitution, the provision for, you know, under which the Chief Justice is appointed. It doesn't make any provision for a panel uh, to be set up to sort of look at the various candidates for public consultation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as you say, uh, there needs to be some kind of a check. Uh, in terms of how this power is exercised and more transparency is welcomed. But I just feel like at some point there should have been a decision and it's not helped, as you say, by the fact that the process itself got underway a bit late. But let me ask you something else, though. Um, from these public consultations, which are not you know, called for in terms of the constitutional process, are we deriving any benefit, though, at the very least, uh, in terms of public inputs? Do you have a way of knowing that, that, you know, for instance, today, the inputs that we will get will be helpful in trimming down from these four candidates so that we end up with the finest uh, leading the judiciary? So, um, Tulas, I think I must clarify a little bit on what the Constitution says. Um, the Constitution doesn't say that there must be a selection panel the way that the president uh, has set up, but it, it gives him a free will on how to go about uh, appointing the next chief justice. The only requirement in terms of the Constitution is that he must consult the Judicial Service Commission, which is the stage at which we are at now. So this, this stage is required by the Constitution, and the usefulness of the comments that will be made today is that they will, be, they will come up during the interviews next month because the Judicial Service Commission will receive all of those comments and they will circulate it among the 23 or so commissioners on, the, on, that, on that commission. And each of them will have an opportunity to put those questions to the, the candidates that come up for interviews. So this is a very important process and I think the public should participate in it um, because that will ultimately determine um, what issues are put before the candidates. And then also at the end of that, um, the JSC will have its own view on who should be Chief Justice and they'll advise the president. Then the president will make a decision from there. And there's no gain saying that, um, Begazeli, that we, we have before us four fine candidates and any of them could really become the next Chief Justice. As judges matter, have you applied your minds as to, you know, what's your preference? So uh, as judges mentor, we depart not from who should be, but what qualities should, be, should inform who should be the next chief justice. And we've identified about four. 
The first one is that the person must be an excellent uh, judge. They must have written judgments that have an impact on the law and on the development of the law. The second one is integrity. The, the, the person must have a track record of integrity. The third one is that the, the, the person must have leadership or management experience. So they must have some experience in running a complex organization, such as a, a court or a, or, or a large organization. And then the last one is a commitment to the values of the constitution and being uh, and, and having evidence of being outspoken and, and quite vocal on, on respect for the values of the constitution. So those for us are absolutely critical qualities. Luckily, most of the candidates have them, um, but of course it differs to the degree. Um, so we don't have a particular candidate, but the focus should be on the qualities and that's what the JSC should also focus on. Do you foreground any of the issues that have to do with considerations for, for instance, the fact that we've never had a woman um, as Chief Justice of the Republic, uh, but also considerations such as, if you think about uh, Justice uh, Raymond Zondo, for example, issues of continuity, uh, do, do those uh, feature anyway in your discussions? Yes, we have thought about those issues. Um, in our analysis, we've looked at different qualities. So, for example, um, if you're looking at the requirement that there must be diversity on the bench, then Justice Maya is a front runner on that score. But if you're looking at continuity, you, you do look at Justice Zondo. But also considering that Justice Zondo only have, has two years left on the Constitutional Court before he retires, so that might count against him. Looking at um, just, uh, Judge President Mla, who's run a very big and busy court, both at the Gauteng High Court and the Labour Court. Though that experience does put him forward um, than most other candidates. Justice Majlanga has written some of the most impactful judgments on, the land, on, on land issues, um, on, on, on issues of corruption, on other important social issues. So for those reasons, he could easily be a front runner as well. So, uh, we look at all of these qualities and, and try to balance each candidate against the other. And, and we, at this point, don't have a single candidate, but um, we yeah. think all of them should have a fair shake at yeah. the interviews. I mean, just from the rundown you just gave now, you just again demonstrated that you could actually just go any, mini, mini, mo uh, with these four candidates and you will end up with hopefully a fine candidate that will be consistent from the beginning to the end of their tenure uh, because that's the other thing, right? Someone might start out well and towards the end uh, sort of lose their grip uh, on things. Megazeli Benjamin, always a pleasure engaging with you and the message from you is the public must engage with this process and must be heard. Yes, absolutely. All right, thank you for that. Mbegazeli Benjamin there from the organization Judges Matter. You have until the end of today uh, to make your voice heard on the four candidates for the position of Chief Justice. Uh, just look out the details, look up the details uh, from the Judiciary Office. Uh, I think it's the Secretariat of the Judicial Services Commission uh, that is receiving those inputs. It's a simple email. Just send out an email to them and just let them know what you think of the four candidates and what questions uh, you have in your mind uh, about the four. Uh, you know, if we have a process, even if we didn't need to have it, let's take full advantage of it.